Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Tanner and I'm a year four medical student at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Oh, that's me right there, Nicole's Anatomy. So when I was seven years old, I wanted to be a doctor and my parents got me this book. It was the little encyclopedia of the human body. My parents claim they didn't try to brainwash me, but who gets their kid this book? Am I right, Jennifer? Right? So I had this book when I was a little kid, and I absolutely loved it. I would read it every single day, and i try to memorize every little fact. How many inches of an intestine fit into my body? How many milliliters of sweat my glands produced? And I absolutely was fascinated by the intricacy of the human body. So as I grew up in the past 11 years, I've been doing a lot of surgical attachments, going to different hospitals to try to pursue this dream. And when it was 2013, I applied to medical school at CUHK. Now, when I first got to medical school, I kind of assumed that medicine would kind of be like Grey's Anatomy or House or Dr. X. You, do you guys know what I'm talking about, that kind of film? But when I got to medical school, the situation was quite different. First of all, nobody is really that good looking. I wish. Uh, second of all, I encountered a lot of different problems. I was very lost by how much information medicine was. And I was also always challenged by people. You know, I'd go to these family dinners, and there's always that one relative that takes out her bag of medicine and it has these little pills, right? And she's like, oh, I had a cough last week, and there's this pill that I take. It's white, and it's about this size. Do you know which one? And I was like, oh, that one. No idea. Um, but when I got into medical school, I absolutely love CUHK. It's really the best. But I found myself so overwhelmed by the knowledge that is medicine. I was so lost. Um, I think... You know, I, I'm the only student speaker here tonight, and when I saw the list of speakers, I was a little bit overwhelmed. But I want to speak to you guys, student to student. I think a lot of you know what it's like to be me. You know, when your teacher writes something on the board, like a calculus equation, she says something annoying like, you guys all know this, right? And you have no idea what she's talking about. That's how I felt for the past four years of medicine. I would go to these hospitals, and I would watch these doctors work, and I would have no idea what they were doing. And everyone in my class was so smart. I spent so much of my time trying to catch up, trying to get to the same pace. I was chasing knowledge. I was chasing to be the same pace as everybody else, and I just felt ridiculously lost. And eventually, I think my fear of medicine overtook my passion for medicine. I became so scared. I was always concerned about my grades, my exams. I was so concerned about surviving medicine that I forgot why I was there in the first place. And that's when I was in year three. I encountered something that changed my life. I got into robotic surgery. So what is robotic surgery? Well, it's an interesting development in medicine. Um, where we have a robot right there, as the name implies, on the right. And so those are the arms of the robot. And on the left, we have a surgeon. And he sits at what is, what is called a tele-manipulator and looks into this screen that has a 3D view of surgery. And then he has these little arms that act as sort of like a video game. And you work, um, and while you work, that goes, the connection goes into the robot which in the effector arm kind of carries out the surgery. And when I first watched my number one robotic surgery, I remember I walked into the room, and um, I still remember, I walked in and I, and I saw the patient sort of in the middle of the room, just like that, with a nurse around. And I asked someone next to me, I said, oh, has the surgery not started yet? And she's like, no, 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 it started. I said, oh, unless, you know, I, I don't see the surgeon. Did he, you know, go for a coffee break, like pumpkin spice latte in the middle of the day? And she's like, no, the surgeon's right there. And she points to the opposite corner of the room. And there he was, sitting there. And right above which was this huge screen. And I remember it was a colorectal surgery, which means uh, a surgery of the colon and the rectum. And I still remember 
how fascinated and how caught up I was in the moment of watching that first, it was almost like I was inside this guy's body. And today I want to bring you to that exact same experience that I had two years ago. Um, this is actually, can I play the video? Yeah. This is a robotic surgery. It's a removal of a gallbladder from the um, liver. Which were never oh, the music is so nice. <laughs> it was narrator as well. So that right there is the gallbladder, and that's the liver. The gallbladder is stuck to the liver with a lot of tissues in between. And that hook is the robot, the robotic arm, and it's sort of peeling the gallbladder away from the liver. Just a little bit. I'm sorry, I forgot to say disclaimer if you're not into this thing or you're eating pork liver after tonight. This is not a good video to watch. We're just peeling. And that's the gallbladder right there. And he puts it into the bag. And the bag's inside the body and then they rip it out of the body like that. That's amazing, right? No? Just me? Okay, it's okay. You know, for four years of my education, oh, well, hello. <laughs> Can we go back one slide? Go back two slides. For four years of my education, I looked at something like this, which a lot of you students probably recognize, anatomy, textbook. I always felt very disconnected to my education. I felt disconnected to what I was reading and the information I was given. I felt no relationship to it. But when I watched that robotic surgery, I suddenly realized that there was so much more about the human body, so much that I was still so fascinated about. I felt like I was that seven-year-old again. You know, when I was seven years old, reading that little encyclopedia of the human body, it was that moment again. I was so entranced by the whole experience. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what technology can do for our education. When I was in that surgery, I realized that there was so much that was advancing in medicine that I was missing because I was so caught up in knowing things for my exams, studying things that were only to be tested. You know, whenever my teacher said something like, um, this isn't going to be in the exam, but, you know, I'd always hear the rest of the sentence as blah, 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 blah. But there's actually so much knowledge out there that is so interesting, that makes us passionate, you know? I realized that medicine is advancing at such a fast rate. Technology is advancing so fast. And being a part of that journey is what makes medicine something so scientific and art. You know, with robotic surgery nowadays, it's it's so crazy because you'll see a patient on the, on the table doing a surgery and the next day they'll be walking around, chatting, having coffee. In a traditional surgery, the scar or the incision where we cut is starting from the beginning of your chest all the way to almost your groin, a very, very long scar. And you open it up with a retractor and then you operate that way. But with robotic surgery, the arm only needs four to five holes of about this size. So you have patients waking up from surgery, having scars that are really, you can barely find the scars. I mean, it's very, very good for bikini season. <laughs> Research has shown that robotic and minimally invasive surgery has done so much for our patients. It decreases the risk of infection, decreases risks of bleeding, it shortens hospital stay, it causes less pain for the patient as well. And for cases where you have patients with HIV and hepatitis, it decreases the risk for the surgeon as well. And that moment, encountering robotic surgery, was when I found my passion. And for the past year, I've been doing a lot of research, clinical research into robotic surgery and into laparoscopic surgery and how we can improve that. We can continue to improve that technology for generations to come. I want to end this talk with a story. It was a very interesting story that actually happened to me this week. I was thinking about my topics, and what, how I can tie all of this passion into a catalytic experience as the theme of tonight is. And um, this week is interesting. I had a patient, um, and a very interesting patient. So right before we watch a surgery as medical students, the day before, we need to go and Clark the case, 
which means talking to the patient, finding out their history, and also doing an examination on the patient. And so me and my friends, we go to this patient, um, and we start talking to him, and he's very talkative. He tells me everything about his history, like ever. He tells me his pets, his favorite color, everything. He's very talkative. Um, and this guy is an IV drug addict. He had, um, he had hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and these are both um, diseases that can be transmitted if you have needle prick, um, in, um, needle prick accidents. Um, and so we were talking to him, and you know, I, we talked to about maybe three, four patients a day, and then the clinics we see another 20, 30 patients. So after that, it was, it, it was no big deal for me. Um, this case was very interesting. He had a um, liver cancer, so it was a liver cancer on the right side of his liver. And for the surgery the next day, he needed to remove half of his liver so that the liver cancer wouldn't recur. Now, sorry, I'm going to go back. It's not that interesting because liver cancer is very common. You go to a ward, a lot of patients have liver cancer. And the thing is, a lot of medical students are very numb to that by now. Um, and so the next day, I go to the surgery, and it was a robotic surgery, rem robotic removal of half of the liver. It's about that size. It's huge. And again, I was so entranced by the surgery. It was about a four-hour surgery, and I remember I was there with my little 3D glasses, and it was, it was such a mesmerizing experience. I absolutely loved the surgery. And the next day, I go back to the hospital, and I'm sitting outside the... Um, I'm sitting outside the hospital waiting for the lifts, and I see this man staring at me. Now, this isn't, this isn't very common. I don't know for, you know, some of you, but, you know, for me, it's not very common for someone to be staring at me. So this guy is staring at me, and um, I look back at him, and, I'm, and I smile. I don't really recognize him. And he comes over, and he's like, did you watch it? I'm like, did I watch what? He said, my surgery. I was like, I watched four surgeries yesterday. Like, who are you? He's like, we had a really long conversation. I told you my pet. I told you my favorite colors. And I'm like, oh, you're the liver guy. You're the guy with the liver cancer. Um, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's me. I'm like, have a seat, sir. And so we sit outside the lips. And he's like, no, tell me. Tell me everything about this surgery. And so I'm like, OK, I'll tell you everything. I told him from the beginning when they put those robot arms in. I told him about the, how the surgeon resected his liver, how he took it out, and he would ask questions. He was such a good student. He'd be like, okay, but my liver was huge, right? Like, how did they take it out of me? Oh, well, they had to widen your incision just to remove it. And we're there having a 30-minute conversation. And while we were talking, I kept thinking, this guy, he's, he's an IV drug addict. He's 30 years older than me. <laughs> completely different background, completely different culture, language barriers. We had nothing in common. And given any other day, we would have nothing to talk about. But here we were, two people coming from two different worlds, and we were sharing a 30-minute conversation like we were old friends. And we were brought together, we were connected by the idea of medicine and how amazing it is. Ladies and gentlemen, medicine helped, robotic surgery helped redefine my passion in medicine. There was a time when I felt lost, when I felt like I wasn't studying for the right reasons. But seeing robotic surgery, it helped me realize why I'm doing what I love doing. And robotic surgery and medical technology, it's not defining in my career. I still have a very, very long way to go. But it really definitely did redefine my passion. And I want to encourage each and every one of you today, whether you're a student, whether you're the headmaster, whether you're just here with your kids, whether you're falling asleep, um, I encourage you to find the robotic surgery in your life. Find the thing that redefines your passion. Find the thing that gives you a new perspective into something that you've spent your whole life doing. Find the thing that gives you a fresh breath of air. Because when you find your passion, when you find what you absolutely love, 
That's when you can share that passion with the people around you. That's when you can be the, a catalyst to the people that need you, that need your passion. And so be a catalyst to the IV drug addicts around you. Redefine your passion. Thank you very much.